Hi, I'm George and this is John. We're both from the Veterans Wellbeing Centre at Hornsby. We're here today to produce an assistance video for veterans on managing your medicines. We'll be joined later on today at the Hornsby Heights Pharmacy with a young lady called Alexandra Torrance who is a flight lieutenant in the RAF reserves and also a pharmacist. She is the owner operator of the Hornsby Heights Pharmacy and will take us through all the different steps in managing your medicines. We're looking forward to meeting her within the next couple of hours. So thank you. Good morning, my name is George Main. I'm from the Veterans Wellbeing Centre here at Hornsby. I'm with Alex Torrance today, who is the pharmacist and owner of the Hornsby Heights Pharmacy, and is also a member of the RAF Reserve. You're a flight lieutenant pharmacist yes. with the RAF Reserve. We're here today to discuss medications for veterans and the many issues faced by veterans uh, trying to obtain and understand their medications. We actually have a 10 point checklist that we're going to talk about together and discuss some of the issues. So welcome. Thanks for having me, George. Okay. Medications, I guess in the service you just go to your normal RAP or doctor and you get your pills and you walk away, you don't think much of them. But there's a greater issue for discharging veterans leaving the services to go in to a pharmacy and to start talking about medication. So let's start going through what we consider the 10 checkpoints that we need to consider about medications and use your advice and your experience here as a, a veteran as well and the RAF and also a very experienced pharmacist. Yes. So at the moment, the first check thing is to know your medicines. So can you explain about knowing the name to things? It's very complicated, some of these medicine names. Yes, they can be. And you make a good point there, George, about when people discharge from the Defence Force, whether it be recently or a long time ago, mm. uh, sometimes they're used to just going into their pharmacy there and having that all sorted. So when you leave, it's important to take ownership of that and really get an understanding of what it is you're taking. And so, as you said, the first step in that is know those medicines, what are the names of them. That can be a bit tricky because yep. there's often a brand name and then a actual drug right, name yep, for that. Yep. Um, so my tip would be to try and learn the actual drug name of your medication mm -hmm. because that way it doesn't matter what brand you're given you know what it is that All you're right, Well, that's, that's a good point because quite often when you go to the pharmacy, you'll be offered the brand or a chemist's own or a pharmacy own. Are they the same medications? Yeah, so for pharmacies to be able to substitute or give you a different mm -hmm. brand, yes, they do need to be identical. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's important if you can know what the actual drug name is yep. rather than what brand you may have had, yep. it's less confusing for you. Right. So some of the things that a pharmacist, and if you get to know your local mm -hmm. pharmacy, can help you with is developing an understanding of that. We can do something called a meds check, which is right. where we sit with you in the pharmacy, go through your list of medications, talk about what you're taking, the names of them, what they're for, and help you prepare a list of what they all are. I think that's a great idea because I think a lot of veterans, especially contemporary veterans, might have been in Afghanistan and Iraq and have recently discharged, might have 
several medications, probably four or five, some to help with psychiatric problems, some to do with medical issues. Uh, and I guess you've got to have a better understanding what the drug does for you as well and what you can and cannot have with it. That's right. The more medications that you're taking, the greater the potential for them to mm. interact either with each other or, as you mentioned, mm. with possibly things that you are going to buy over the counter. All so right. that's an important consideration if you uh, just have a cold or something like that. Yep. When you come into the pharmacy seeking medication for that, okay. make sure you chat to your pharmacist about what medicines you are taking. And the list can be helpful because if you've got that in your pocket, you can show the pharmacist, yep. this is what I'm taking, what can I take for my cold or Agreed, because like some of the medications would, would be quite strong medications, opiates and things like that, I would imagine some of our veterans might be on. Alex, I guess one of the most important things is taking the medication as prescribed. I guess you might, must keep an eye on the medication dosages uh, and it could be paying attention to what the script says or the packet says because I think that's most important because if you start taking too many or at the wrong time. So what would your advice be for that? Yeah, definitely. Medications will only work for you if you take them and if you mm -hmm. take them correctly. Yeah. So there can obviously be safety issues in taking too much of a medication. Yeah. And if you don't take enough, then sometimes that it won't work because the dose yeah. will be ineffective. So the important point there is to make sure that you take the medicine as it's been prescribed by the doctor. And if you have any questions about that, if you're not sure of what you're supposed to take, to just double check that. Okay, well, if I was taking my medication and I'm starting to have some issues, now I know that most of the medication packets have a little warning labels inside or how, what the side effects are basically. Now, if I'm having some issues, I could go back to my pharmacist really and say, look, you know, this particular tablet I'm taking for this is giving me crazy head or something or I'm feeling crook, what would your advice be then? Yeah, I would say to definitely get in touch with your pharmacist mm. and or your doctor yeah. uh, because you don't want to be guessing about what you should do. Um, you know, you might yeah. think that you want to just keep taking it, um, but if it's really affecting you badly, mm. um, you need to seek advice about that. All right. Would you advise someone to actually stop their medication if they're having serious side issues or side effects from, from the meds? If I come in to see you and I'm really having some issues, uh, would you advise me to stop and then contact my doctor straight away, I suppose? Yeah, that, that's where I think the advice of your pharmacist is yeah. really important and it's a really... Um, individual answer to that question. Yeah. It would depend what the medication is, right. it would depend um, what kind of side effects you're experiencing yeah. and so I would say contact your pharmacist for that advice yeah. because it could be you're right if it was very severe they yeah. would say no you need to stop that now yeah. um, or if it was a less severe side effect that was something that's to be expected yeah. of that medication yeah. right. they may say that's okay, that's normal, bear with it, it's only for a day or so. But that's where it's very individualised mm. and something that I would speak to your pharmacist okay. so, about. All right, so you, you're aware of those side effects when you issue these medications to our veterans and that. And there is always some side effects, I suppose, for some of the medication we take. But I guess if you build a rapport up with your pharmacist, then you'd have faith in the pharmacist by going back and saying, look, I've got an issue of so-and-so, I don't feel well, and your advice as you just stated would be, well, that's normal, George, that's the type of side effects you get, you'd be right. Or because you have this relationship with your local pharmacist, you would trust that person. You would say, look, stop, George, ring the doctor now. Yeah, yeah. and there's uh, with when you get medication, there is a... There's information called mm. consumer's medicines information. Yeah. So that's a printout that the pharmacist can give you. And what we usually try and do is when you get a prescription for the first time, yeah. is we give that to you. Sometimes it comes in the box, other times we print it out. And we can go through that with you to try and give you some idea of things that you might yeah. expect. 
and sometimes there's little tips around how you can minimize that so it could be this thing gives you a bit of an upset tummy yep. if you take it with some food the chances of that are reduced um, so that's why it's worth having that conversation before and then when you get home and if you do take it you are having a problem give your pharmacist a call good idea good advice all right um i guess keeping a list of your current medicines also is is pretty good i find it hard to keep a list so i tend to leave all my scripts with my pharmacist is that a good idea or should i keep them at home i guess when i leave them at home i get a concern that i might lose them or i can't find them but when i get back to my pharmacy uh, my pharmacist has them all there and they're under control so is, is that a good idea is that is that available or e-scripts e or something yeah there's so many options available these days and it is a bit of a personal choice mm. some people like to keep their prescriptions at home because they can keep track of them yep. um, but it's often a good idea to let your pharmacy look after that for you okay. uh, you can most pharmacies have a system where they can keep them on file let you know when you're about to run out of prescriptions or if you've had your last prescription and help you to manage that well I've noticed on some of my pills that I get, I get a little label on there. It tells me how to like, take it before lunch or wait half an hour till after you've eaten. But also reminders when my last repeat's coming up. So I guess that's a good uh, help for yes. controlling your medicine. Yeah. Well, what about things like e-scripts? Uh, how do they work? Yes, yeah, so this is something that's fairly new to the prescription landscape mm -hmm. um, and basically it's just an electronic version of a prescription. Okay. So that often comes in handy if you are having a telehealth appointment, for mm -hmm. example, you might not be actually going into the surgery. Right, yep. um, and so then the doctor can send your e-prescription to your phone or to yep. your email and you can take that into the pharmacy and they can scan that into their system. All right. Would I be able to email that from my phone to the pharmacy or do I have to physically go in with my telephone? You can. There are yeah. ways that you can forward it to the pharmacy okay. and that can sometimes be helpful if you need someone else to pick up the medication on your behalf idea, or perhaps yeah. if you are sick and have COVID mm -hmm. or something, can't leave the yeah. house and you might want a delivery, yeah. um, you can forward that onto the pharmacy. We can get it ready for you and organise it that way. Mm -hmm. But there's also a way that you can give your pharmacy permission to view what's called your active script list. Mm -hmm. So that is where uh, if the doctor has done an electronic prescription for you, and it essentially gets sent up into your little healthcare mm -hmm. cloud, you can give your pharmacy permission to view that. So then it's like having the virtual filing cabinet there that okay. they can access for you. And that can sometimes be easier. And that's all through eHealth. Yeah. Right. Um, and again, have a chat to your pharmacy about that because we can help you set mm -hmm. that all up to help you manage it easily. I, I notice when a lot of veterans get out, they don't, have any idea how all, the, all these things work like how e-health works and how to get registered because we're just so used to having the military take care of us so I know when I uh, resigned my commission and left I went online and you link all your services together like DVA and e-health and, and through my e-health records I could see how many times I've been the doctor and what I have done and what medications I was issued with and I guess that links into now with this new e-scripts yeah, so there's a whole lot more inf health information yeah. that's available electronically now. Yeah. But also uh, the paper system is still there. So if that's yeah. your preference that you would still yeah. like the paper prescription, mm -hmm. you can still ask for that. And either way, your pharmacist can help you manage it. You know, Alex, another important issue, I think, is the expiry dates of medicines as well and, and keeping old medicines because I know uh, some of the vets that I have visited, they have a collection of medications. They might be on five or six different medications and you go around and you think, well, I wonder how old some of these are and I don't think they're paying much attention to the, to the date mm. or the use-by dates. Mm. Now, do the medications come out with use-by dates on their boxes and then what would your advice be for old medicines? Yeah. So, yes, they do, your medicines will have an expiry date on them mm -hmm. and my advice would be not to use them 
after that date. Okay. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, what it was prescribed for five years ago when you first had it yeah. might not be relevant to what you have today. And in fact, it could be um, contrary to some of the mm -hmm. other things you've now been prescribed. Yeah. So you don't want it hanging around in case you take it by mistake or just in case. Um, also, you don't want a whole heap of collection of medicines around in case you've got grandkids or someone over and, and they get mm -hmm. into it. But beyond that, once a medication has expired, we don't know the safety of that. So the company has done studies up until that drug expires. Mm -hmm. And after that, if you take it, it might actually not be All right, safe. well then, how do I overcome that issue? I mean, I noticed on some of the medication packets, the use-by dates are very, very tiny mm. on, on the box. I mean, is there, is there a facility available from the pharmacist to come around to your house and check things, or do I bring all my meds into you to have a look at them? Yeah. Mm. Well, yes, there is, there is help at hand. So we mm. spoke before about medication reviews inside the pharmacy yep. where we can talk about your medicine. Yep. For more complex uh, cases, there is a thing called a home medicines review, and that's where a pharmacist can actually come out to your house, all right. have a look at all your medicines, mm -hmm. have a look at your medicine cabinet, and help you understand what you have and get rid of anything that's out of date. Uh, and so we can help you out with that. You need a referral from your GP to to organise okay, that. Okay, so I've got to have a referral first. Yep, for that my... to happen. Okay. Um, but then once that's in place, the pharmacist can come out and help you sort through all of that. So what what do you do with the old medication? Now you've gone through and found out I've got a half a dozen meds that I don't really need. Will you take them away? Yes, yeah. we will. Yeah. So we'll take them away with us. We have at our pharmacy, and most pharmacies have a special disposal mm -hmm. program. Right. It's called the RUM program, Return Unwanted Medicines. So you can bring them back into the pharmacy mm -hmm. or we would collect them from you, bring yeah. them in and they get sent yeah. away for safe disposal. Okay, now here at Hornsby Heights Pharmacy, I hear you have an SMS system or something. How, how does that work? Yeah, so we were talking before about uh, keeping on top of your repeats and mm -hmm. your medications. So yeah. you can keep your medications on file, your prescriptions mm -hmm. on file. Yeah. And at our pharmacy, we have an SMS reminder service. So that is where when your tablet is we yep. worked out, you should be about running out of that. Um, we will send you a reminder to say, hey, George, your blood pressure tablet is nearly... Mm -hmm. Do you, yeah. do you want us to get it ready? And you can send back a yes. We'll get it ready and send you a message when it's good right. to go. Okay. Um, another question I have too, because I know that a lot of veterans that I deal with have, well, I think they call it poly, polypharmacy, where you have probably over five or six different medications at one time. What if I wanted to go away on a holiday and I wanted to bulk up on my meds? I mean, am I able to do that if I think I'm going to go away for a five-week holiday or something and I'm running low, can I bulk up on, on, on my pills, given this new 60-day business on scripts or something that the government's pushing? Mm. It's all a bit complicated, mm. uh, but yes, there are ways if you were going away mm. that you can get extra medication. Um, so the doctors can write special prescriptions that mm. allow you to get enough medication to see you through okay. for the period of time that you're away. Right. Another thing that I have found um, people often use when they're travelling is what we call a dosage administration aid. Mm. So that's where instead of you having to take 10 different boxes and bottles of all the different pills mm -hmm. that you're taking. Uh -huh. You get the pharmacy to put them into a, uh, a special pack where we lay out. So I've got one here to show you. I don't know if you've seen one before. A Webster pack. What a Webster a, pack, yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. And I guess that's got my details, my name, everything on there, my medications, and then... When to take it. When so to take it. And that's a good idea, breakfast, lunch, and given though I'm on multiple medications as well, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Now, I can travel with that. You can travel with that because it's all sealed. It's got your name. Yeah. It's got a list of all the different medications that you're taking and when. Yep. And it's a lot more compact than multiple 
boxes yep, and bottles. Of course. And what I often find, these are used not just for travel, but mm. people who may have trouble remembering what they're supposed to be taking and when, or just for convenience, get these. I often find people start when they're travelling somewhere and mm. think, you know what, that was actually easier. Um, I'll... I'll get that all the time. It's not, not a bad idea given, as I said, multiple medications and as we are getting older, some of us old veterans, to remember whether you've taken your morning pill half an hour before when you should have taken it. That's right. Yeah, you yeah. can see clearly, yeah. oh yes, it's Monday morning breakfast, yep. I've taken yep. that slot. Right. Uh, and it's, it's a good point to note yeah. that veterans are actually entitled to have these um, paid for. Um, okay. the packing okay. of that. In conjunction, they need to speak to their doctor and, and you know, get a referral, mm. make sure that's appropriate okay. for them. So, but it's something they could definitely look into. But all this initiates from the doctor prescribing, or oh, sorry, the doctor making referrals to the pharmacist to have all this done. You've got to yeah. go to the doctor first and work that way. So I guess if you're a gold carter or a white carter, with Veterans Affairs, you'd come through and get this. Now, what about storing these things? I mean, this this looks great, but how do I store all my meds and things when, when I get home? Yeah. What's the, what's the best place to put them? If I've got a Webster pack, is that okay sitting in the cupboard like that? Or what if I've got individual packets or bottles? What's the best place of storing them? The rule of thumb with storing your medication is you want to keep it in a cool dry mm -hmm. place so yep. you don't want to have it in the bathroom cabinet where there's lots of steam and water and things right, because, you know sorry to interrupt you but funny enough i think most people keep the bloody stuff in the bathroom, in the bathroom yeah. because they're going yeah. through the morning ablutions and things but yes, that's yeah. not not a good place so somewhere a bit drier and cooler yeah. you also don't want to keep it in in your car where in summer you know it, it gets yeah. up to really hot temperatures because okay. that can affect the medication as well. All right, well that's a good point now if I'm running in a Webster pack and I'm going out for the day I don't really want to take the whole Webster pack with me so mm. what would your advice be if I've got to have my lunchtime medication? You can also get little pill boxes. Yep. So you might know, oh, I'm going out for lunch. Mm -hmm. So you could either pop your pills from your Webster pack mm -hmm. or even just from your bottles and boxes at home yeah, right. into your little pill box yeah, yeah. that you can carry in your bag right. or your Because you, you don't particularly want to be having lunch and... and, and Pulling and, out your big Webster but, pack, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Now, when you say in a cool, dry place, uh, does it matter whether they're bottles or whether they're packets i mean where you store these things i mean should you keep them all together you can keep them all together that's mm. a good that's probably a good idea there there are some exceptions to that sometimes you will have a medication that needs to be refrigerated for yep. example okay. and the pharmacist will mm. alert you to that okay. put a sticker on it just to remind you to keep it in the fridge but yeah. other than that it's often a good idea to keep them all together in the one yeah. place and you know that's where you go to get okay well if if you're on a reasonable amount of medication another thought i might have had if you've got them all in one location should you tell your partner or your wife or your children where, where your medication is and and what the medication's for because you know not everybody knows what dad's on or what your husband might be on so mm. i guess you should, really should let the family know as well yeah, that's a good point because sometimes there are situations where you might go to hospital urgently mm -hmm. and if you can't tell the doctor what yeah. at the hospital what you're taking, mm -hmm. if your partner or family mm -hmm. knows that, that mm -hmm. can they can definitely help okay. the doctors out. And I would probably also recommend when you've got your medicines in this location, mm -hmm. this list we were talking about before of what yeah. you're taking and when, if you keep that updated and you keep a copy of that with mm -hmm. your medications, then if anyone ever needs to know quickly what it is you're taking, you can go to that list and give that okay, information. Okay, because that's the last thing to think about when you have a turn or, or you get ill and you have to be rushed off to hospital. Is it advisable to take your medication with you to the hospital or just the list? Because when you get into hospital, they've obviously got to do whatever they're going to do to, yeah. to save your life or whatever. Yeah. Would you take your Webster pack with you? Look, if you can, mm -hmm. you could. It's really useful in that it has got the list up the top. Yep. Um, but really, it's the information they need. So if you didn't have the actual medication, if mm -hmm. you had yep. that list, then yeah. that would be what they need. Because I would imagine when you go into hospital, they would 
the hospital would want to issue your meds from their pharmacy, not That's necessarily right. use your That's right. your pills. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Now, I had one other question before we move on to the next subject, but uh, from what you're saying to me, I, I think really if you could do it, it and you build up a good rapport with your pharmacist, would be to kind of stay with one pharmacist pharmacy, I should say. Mm. Uh, they're not called chemists, they're called pharmacies. Uh, us old folk tend to call them chemist shops. But if you have this relationship, I guess it would be best to stay with one pharmacy. Can you explain something about like the PBS? I'm not sure how that works, but I think that only works if you deal with one pharmacy. Yeah, so I'd agree with you, George. I think mm. that is very valuable if you can do it, mm. to build a relationship with with one pharmacy. Yeah. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, as we've spoken about, um, the pharmacist having an understanding of what it is you're taking, um, you can build that confidence in their knowledge and that relationship with them. Um, and they can let you know then if something that you've selected from the shelf mm -hmm. may interact or be a problem with your medication. Mm -hmm. With regards to the safety net scheme or the PBS, mm -hmm. uh, there's also considerations there. So there is a scheme called the safety net, which is essentially when you've had a certain number of prescriptions in a calendar year, from the time you reach that threshold until the end of December, your medicines are then essentially free or at a reduced yep. rate, depending on your situation. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are going to the one pharmacy, when you hit that threshold, they will know that, they'll mm. see that, and they'll automatically issue that safety net right. um, benefit to you. If you've gone to different pharmacies, that responsibility of knowing when you hit that is up to you. So yeah. you would have to keep a track of how many prescriptions you've had. So you're right, it would be easier if they were all in one place because that would automatically tick so over. So basically the pharmacies aren't all linked ele electronically to cover the PBS, which seems a bit unusual in, in, in today's high tech. But if I'm going to different pharmacies, I've got to keep a record of all my drugs and all my expenses, which seems a bit silly given I'm getting in my 70s now. <laughs> so if I'm dealing with one pharmacy that I'm happy with, like Hornsby Heights Pharmacy, where I have a veteran who's a pharmacist as well, who is aware of the veteran issues and medications, uh, you're pretty much a one-stop shop for all the things I really need to do. Mm. It does make it easier. As you said, it's not impossible. You mm. can go to different pharmacies, at, but you would yeah. need to keep a record of how many prescriptions you've had and then bring that to the attention of the yeah. pharmacy when, you, when you're getting close to that threshold. Yeah. But if you're going to the one pharmacy, they will do that for you. Yes, excellent. I don't think a lot of veterans realise what services are available from a pharmacy, really. Mm. Uh, okay, Alex, I guess coming towards the end of our discussion about medication, there's a couple of things. I know there's a, a PBS, which is a, the uh, Pharmaceutical Benefits Safety Net, but also isn't there something for veterans as well who have gold cards and or white cards for their medication? Isn't there another list of items and things? Yes, that's right. So there is a REPAT pharmaceutical benefit yeah. scheme and there are items listed on that that aren't available to the general population. Okay. So they're specific for REPAT. So uh, that's something that you know, if you have a particular condition um, that the doctor can prescribe you things that could be of benefit to you. All right. Well, just to jump in there, sorry. So when I come to see my pharmacist, I'd have to identify that I have a gold card or a white card or a, I think there's an orange card now as well. So that initially would entitle me to some benefit as well on, on my scripts. So... Yes, yeah. that's right. So when you first go into your pharmacy, make mm -hmm. sure you present that gold card yeah. or white card to the pharmacy. They can keep a record of that and that will ensure that you get your prescriptions at the concessional okay. rate. All right. Now, what about over-the-counter medications? Now, I know I take a, a small tablet of a morning, which is, I never pronounced the name of it. It has potassium in it rather than taking an anti-arthritic anti tablet. But that's just from 
like your stock at the back here. Is, is there an issue with that as well? Because your pharmacist would have to know what meds you're on and then if you're taking over the counter stuff. Yes, and, and that is a bit of a misconception. Sometimes people think just because I buy it over the counter, mm. it, it won't interact. So definitely make sure even when you're purchasing over the counter medicines that you let your, doc your pharmacist okay. know what it is you're taking. Okay. I guess winding up now, I think we've covered most of the items that we, I, I can think about for, for a veteran, but I guess we need to read all your medications, build up a rapport with your pharmacist, someone like you at Hornsby Heights Pharmacy, where you, you've got someone taking care of you the whole time. So I think that's the, really the way to go. Yeah, I would agree. I think just get to know your community pharmacist and um, there's help out there for people mm. to help them manage their medication. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for being part of our video today and I hope this is some assistance. Later on at the back of the video, you'll see contact details on helplines and help numbers and that to go to. So thank you very much, Alex, here at Hornsby Heights Pharmacy and I wish you all the best with your career with the RAF Reserve as well as a pharmacist. So thank, thank you. Thank you.